Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to Caterpillar's Operator Stadium. I'm your official host, Rutledge Wood. You might know me from NASCAR on NBC, Hyperdrive on Netflix, maybe even Top Gear on the History Channel. All week long, we are doing some incredible stuff out here, from the spotlight demos to the technology demo that's coming up at noon. But one of the biggest treats we have is a guy that you all know and love, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs, also from MicroWorks. He is putting on... Uh, something fun, something different, a game show here at Operator Stadium. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Micro, it's time for Titan of the Trades. <laughs> you <laughs> like that? You make it sound exciting, man. It is. Right. You're here. Oh, you should actually do this for a living or something. <laughs> Let's give it up for Rutledge for crying out loud. It's been here every day doing yeoman's work. This is Titan of the Trades. I am Mike Rowe. To my right, we have a couple of contestants. We're going to test their knowledge of all things Caterpillar. To my left, we have a couple of experts. Lonnie and Jason are standing by. Uh, specifically, we have Micah down here, and we got Steven right here. Both of these guys are instructors. And Micah, you're over at, uh, at Cashman, obviously. Yes, Mike. Yep. Having fun? Yeah, it's a good time out here. Having fun at Cashman? Yeah, I've been there four years. Been an instructor for 10, 16 years at Empire. Four years as a decent mechanic. Just, it's in my blood. Still trying it on, still getting used to it? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Steven, uh, you're also an instructor. You're in, uh, where are you? F Darlington? Florence, Darlington Tech. Yeah, and uh, those might know uh, Darlington, uh, South Carolina, a little bit easier in this crowd. But uh, yes, we uh, grew up in Western Oklahoma. Decided to be a uh, Caterpillar technician and went through uh, Caterpillar's option. Worked in the shop for eight years, back teaching for a number, and now we're uh, operating the facility in South Carolina. That's Happy terrific. That's uh, the, the, there's Speedway down there, isn't it? The Darlington? Yeah, I think it goes around like left around, or something. Around, around. Yeah, a whole bunch of left turns. All right, great. So these guys are doing really, really important work in real life. They're training the next generation of operators, and we're going to test their knowledge right now with a series of multiple-choice questions. The rules are pretty simple. Uh, I ask you each a question. You do your best to answer it. If you get a point, then you get a point. If you don't, you don't. There'll be a fabulous prize at the end for the big winner. Are we ready? Absolutely. Excellent. Yes. All right, Michael, we start with you. First question is this. Which of the following is a good load and haul tip. A, use the same height for the excavator and truck. B, put the excavator higher to load from the top. C, check fantasy football every 10 minutes. D, fill the bucket no more than 50%. Uh, let's go with uh, B. Mike is going with B, B like boy. Yes, sir. Be like better be right. Let's see if Mike is correct. It is B. Put the excavator higher to load from the top. Why is that important, Lonnie? It's very important, Mike. Our production studies show us time and time again when we've launched new excavators and even net models in the past, you can gain up to 15 to 20 percent efficiency by loading off a of bench versus same level loading. And studies show, Jason, 15 to 20 percent is uh, worth, uh, you know, saving. It's a huge amount of savings. If you can do that every day or every cycle, over a week, a day's period, a month's period, a year's period, adds up to a lot of money. See how it works, folks? You learn as you play. I didn't mention this, but if either of you guys uh, want to phone a friend, these are your friends. You can ask for assistance, and they will give you a hint as we progress. Steven, are you ready? Will, we are ready. <laughs> Remember the saying, there's an app for that? Well, it holds true for getting machine insights on your phone. It's called the CAT app. Now, which of the below is not true about the CAT app? A, you can use it on your smartphone. B, it shows machine location and fault codes. C, it operates slope assist in a dozer. D, it can provide monthly fuel reports. Which one of those is not true? We're going to go with uh, shows machine location and fault codes. He's going with B is the correct answer. B. Oh, that's a sound of disappointment right there, Stephen. You could have phoned a friend. We'll, uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, as it turns out, uh, it doesn't operate slope assist in a dozer. Jason, does this come as a surprise to you? No, but the CAT app does everything but that. Location, hours, fuel, fleet information, individual machine information, 
everything that you want in the pocket of your pants or in the pocket of your shirt. I had a nickel for every time I heard that. Lonnie, uh, is it, I mean, we take technology for granted today because it evolves so fast, but how much of a game changer has the, has the app been? It's been a huge game changer, Mike. You know, we started with our Telemax platform being Vision Link, and now we're all the way down to a nimble solution, like Jason mentioned, right in your pocket. You know, you can see those fault codes. You can order parts. You can order service. Uh, like I said, location, fuel, hours, serial number. A lot of information right at your fingertips. Thanks, Lonnie. All right. Uh, it's one to nothing, Stephen. I'm sorry to have to say it, but that's the way it is. The stakes could be higher. You're going to have to knuckle down here. But, uh, Michael, we're back to you. Which is the best measure? of productivity? Is it A, fuel consumption, B, fuel efficiency, C, idle time, or D, operator morale? I'll go with B again. You're going with B, <laughs> fuel efficiency. Is he right? Is it B? Be honest. Oh, but good grief, he's right again. Steven, staggering. Congratulations, Micah. Uh, Fuel efficiency and fuel consumption, Jason, obviously two different things, but related. They are two different things. Fuel consumption is just the measurement of gallons or fuel that you burn. Fuel efficiency is both productivity and fuel. And that's really what you're after at the end of the day, is how much did I move and how much material did I move, how much fuel did I burn doing it? Because that's a better indicator of the performance of your job site and of the machines. You get it right, Lonnie? Absolutely. Cat's known to be the most productive brand, so you have to look at fish and see at the end to really see how efficient you are and putting the dollars to work when you're filling that tank and all the value and productivity you're getting back out of it. Got it. All right, I'm coming to you next, Stephen, but I want to ask you, too, as an instructor in, uh, in, in Darlington, South Carolina, what's happening with the skills gap there and how important and how much opportunity do you see day in and day out with the, uh, with the people you're training? Well, absolutely. There's a, a major gap. And what we're seeing is there is more opportunity for young people in this field than there's ever been before. And if uh, someone is interested in getting into the field, they are likely going to outpace their peers going to another track just because there is such a demand in this area. That's such an incredibly good answer. I'd like to award a bonus point, if I could, to Stephen. But I, I don't know that I have that kind of power or latitude up here, so I'm just going to have to ask you another question. We'll see how it goes. You ready? We're ready. Here it is. Finish this sentence for me, Stephen. Also known as CVAs, CAT Customer Value Agreements, help you A, keep a healthy machine, B, keep track of fuel prices, C, keep track of passwords, D, keep the bathroom seat down. We like to help you with everything, Mike. Yeah. I believe the best answer is going to be A. Stephen's going with A because we try and do it all for you at Caterpillar. Is the correct answer A? Look at that. It is. Keeping your... It, Jason, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is it fair to say a healthy machine is a happy machine? A healthy machine is a happy machine, for sure. I mean, at the risk of anthropomorphizing a machine and, us, and assigning to it, you know, a, a, a human trait, who among us wouldn't want to ha have happy machines? You want a happy machine. Again, it's, if it's running at its peak performance... You're going to get the best out of that machine. You're going to get the best life out of it. You're going to get the best fuel consumption, the best productivity, and fuel efficiency. Fantastic. Lonnie, final thoughts? Yeah, Mike, it's all about comparing uptime and downtime. We're looking for the maximum uptime and the least amount of downtime. And therefore, we have the maximum profitability. Is there anything between uptime and downtime in the industry that has a word? No, Mike, it's a teeter-totter, my friend. It's a, you're saying we're in a binary world, and, and, and if you're, you're either up or down, there's no real middle with regard to time. That's correct. No middle ground. I continue to learn new things. Here's something I've just realized. Our, our game is over. It was fascinating, but, Steve, I'm sorry. With the, uh, with the one point, you are in a firmly uh, subordinate position. Micah, you've won with two points. This means you get a gift card to shopcaterpillar.com with 300 bucks on it. But because Stephen's earlier impromptu, spontaneous answer was, was so terrific, we're also going to give you a card with $100 on there uh, with Caterpillar's compliments. Well, thank you very much. Well, you're very welcome, guys. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thanks for playing Titan yeah. Trades, everybody. I, I had so much fun, I think we should do it again. That means you need to put your microphones on the seats and make your way off in this direction, and I'm going to welcome... Two new contestants. Here they come right now. We have uh, Alex and Seamus. 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 I love Seamus. 
But you spell it funny, S E A M U S. Yes, sir. But you say the H. Yes. So it, it's like Sean, S E A. And same concept. I just, for the longest time, I just thought there was a horrible misspelling going on, and, and people just were living with it. But Seamus and Alex, Seamus, where are you from, and what brought you here? I live in Denver, North Carolina. I work out of the uh, Charlotte branch for North uh, Carolina Cat, Charlotte branch. Um, we want to come here since I was a kid, for, first time out here. What do you do for him? I'm a field service technician for him. Yeah. So I've been in the field since November. Um, I graduated from Think Big about two and a half years ago. I shot for two and a half years doing uh, certified rebuilds, powertrain rebuilds. Right. And then he just can move down the field service. Now, we've got the guy that runs Think Big. He's around here somewhere. I saw him early. What was his name? Uh, Do you know him? I, I'm awful with names. I forget already. Well, you can't even spell your own, so I, I understand. <laughs> Seamus with an H. But, no, that, that, that Think Big program the cat does is just terrific now. I've been around, what, 20, 22 years, something like something, that? It's, it's an amazing program. I I knew little stuff, but going through that program, it, it helps you get a huge foot in the door, especially with the big dealer dealer network like that. It, it's amazing. So you like what you do? I love it every day. And you're going to be doing it the rest of your life. I don't see. I can't imagine anything else. Looks like we got to tighten the trades right here, regardless of what the uh, what the outcome is. Alex L, where do you hail from? I'm from Reedsville, North Carolina. I work for Carolina Cat in the compact equipment shop yeah. out of Greensboro, North Carolina. How long you been there? Uh, six years now. You like it? I love it. Love every day of it. Couldn't see something else I wanted to do. Is this the first time you've been to a, a Con Expo? This is the second year I've been. All going good? It's going great. You ready to play? Yes, sir. All right. You just saw how it works. The rules are simple. Multiple choice questions. You got a friend over here you can phone if you want a hint or you need some help. Lonnie and Jason, their brains are enormous, packed with information, some of which we'll learn as we continue to play. First question goes to you, Alex. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Well, tell me this then. What makes this statement true? A bigger machine will provide A, more productivity, B, better technology, C, more efficiency, or D, more lift capacity. I'm going to go with A, Mike. You're going to go with more productivity. It certainly seems reasonable, but is it correct? <laughs> That's a sound of disappointment right there, Alex. I'm sorry, but the uh, the correct answer is more lift capacity. Lonnie, why is that the correct answer? Bigger machines are designed, Mike, to lift more than a machine that is a smaller configuration. When we look at those other options, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more productive because it might not be as maneuverable on the site. All of our machines, from small to large, have a plethora of technology options on them. And again, if the machine's too big, it's not going to probably be the most efficient option. So. Say the same thing in a slightly different way, Jason. You have to match the machine for the mission. Oh, there you go. You see the difference? You're both very smart, <laughs> but when Jason just really just puts it through the hoop with brevity, it just, it, it's extraordinary. You know who authored that saying, right? No, who? You're looking at him. You did? Yes. So right here, live on the show, plagiarism. It's happening right in front of us. They're not competing for anything, so I can't deduct any points. What I'll do instead is move on to Seamus, who spells his name funny. Tell me this. What? is an optimal idle time range for typical construction equipment fleet on typical jobs? Is it A, 0 to 5 percent, B, 25 to 35 percent, C, 70 to 90 percent, or D, 100 percent of the time, every time? <laughs> I'm going to go with A on that. You're going with A. 0 to 5%, the optimal idle time range. Is the correct answer A? No, it's not. It's B. It's 25 to 35%. And what can only be described as a race to the bottom here, 0 to 0. <laughs> What's happening here, Jason? Why is that question as complicated as it seems? Well, I think everybody would like to have 0 to 5%, but that's basically impossible on any job site. You're always going to have some idle time on every machine. And if you're in the 25 to 35% range, you're really maximizing everything that you can do. You're using the engine idle shutdown, you're using automatic shutdowns, your operators are paying attention. If you're in that range, you're doing pretty good. It'll never be zero. Everybody wants it to be, but it's gonna be impossible to have zero all the time on a job. Lonnie, a wise man once said, uh, an idle brain is the devil's playground. <laughs> yes. Make that somehow relevant to what we're talking about here. Well, what we're talking about here, Mike, unfortunately, the number is staggering in industry of what the actual idle time is. So if we can drive down to these numbers here of 25 to 30 uh, percent, that's a big win for a lot of contractors today in driving efficiency. 
why is idle time so much worse than people think? Well, you got the service meter units are still running. The hour meter still ticking, so you have that machine where and you're getting zero value back from it, okay? We try to talk about efficiency, productivity, and if we're not using the machine to actually complete the task that is on the schedule for that day, the job is in delay, and obviously we're not increasing our bottom line. And uh, I think another really giant brain person once upon a time said time is money, which, of course, Jason, also means money is time. This is correct, I assume? That is correct. Uh, like Lonnie mentioned, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta try to control it as much as you can. You'll never get rid of it. But if you're running in that range, you're doing everything you can possibly can with your operators, your, your machine, and your applications. You know, I like to think we're embracing that concept here in a, in a totally holistic way. You talk about idle time. Like we could be sitting here right now, just watching these guys prepare for the next yeah. demo. <laughs> but we don't do that. Instead, we take an opportunity to bring you a fake game show with a fake host and real contestants, and set up a construct whereby we can actually learn something useful. That. That, to me, suggests a, a real affirmative commitment to destroying idle time within the Caterpillar architecture. you buying any of that? It's completely, Mike. We're doing a good job of it. Seamus, what I just did there was literally kill time. I just literally killed two minutes. I saw that. I liked it. Just by, this is what I do. This is my trade. <laughs> Alex, your trade is a little different, but right now your mission is clear. You need to answer this question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Here it comes. Operations can see results like 46% fewer project hours, 37% less fuel consumed, and 27% fewer operator hours by using what? A, better job site preparation, B, a different fuel source, C, two machines instead of one, or D, technology over traditional construction methods. I'm gonna read the question again because honestly I've never seen anything quite so convoluted in, in print, all right? So I want you to really think it through, and all the rest of you, too. A, we're throwing a lot at you. Operations can see results like 46% fewer project hours, 37% less fuel consumed, and 27% fewer operator hours by using what? I think I'm going to phone a friend, Mike. I don't blame you. Which friend would you like? You got Lonnie and Jason. I'll take Jason. Jason. All right, I can help you out. I'll help you out by taking away an answer, not giving you the right answer. So let's take away A, better job site preparation is not the answer for this question. All righty. I'll go with D. D, technology over traditional construction methods. Let's see if he's right. Oh, he's right. Look at that. It's one to nothing. We got ourselves a, we got ourselves a game. You better collect your thoughts, Seamus, because the stakes are going to get very high momentarily. Um, why did you give him A in terms of eliminating a choice? What was your thought process there? Well, if you look at that question, A could be a viable answer. You know, if you set up the job site better, you can improve some efficiencies. But again, to get those sort of gains, you really have to use technology on the machines. You have to use great control, payload. All those systems are making the application more efficient. They're also making the operator more efficient. They can do more with the technology, thus they're getting better efficiencies overall for the entire project with the technology. Obviously, I can't tell you anything you guys you don't know about, about your business, but I remember years ago, seven, eight years ago, I was over at Cashman, and I was talking to one of the, uh, one of the reps or you know, one of the repair technicians, and I asked him what the most important tool was in his in his box, and he and he showed me the iPad, <laughs> and he was like, "Seriously, you 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 wouldn't believe how much gets done now, you know, under a machine, taking a picture, accessing schematics or whatever. Has that now gotten into a whole nother level as well?" Absolutely. We continue to develop uh, more and more in information, Mike, on the digital platform for our service technicians. Um, the big tool that's been around a lot on the laptop is CAT ET, Electronic Technician. Uh, that has a plethora of the information they need in there, especially the electronic world. So, yes, we continue to work on new ways to bring them more information, even inside the office, uh, with remote troubleshoot. So that's a new technology coming out where they can remote into the machine from afar and uh, possibly diagnose from there, or at least be better prepared uh, when they come to the sites to maybe have that part instead of making a trip back and another back to the machine to get it up and running again. So we're back to uptime and downtime. Knowledge is power.
Did you say afar just now? Afar. Was the old joke? Why did the uh, why why did three wise men have stood on their faces? Because oh, they yeah. came from afar. afar. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Thank you. It. They can't all be pearls. Come on. All right. Uh, where were we? I think we're uh, we're coming to you, Seamus. Yes, sir. All right. Are you ready? I don't know. Oh, well, let's find out. Keeping an eye on your results is a good way to get better at something. It's why coaches watch film after the game. For a construction machine, which of the following is the best method to monitor performance? Is it A, view telematics reports? B, record and track inspections. C, keep record of your fuel costs. D, review total jobs completed. Hmm. And guys, I just want to point out, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe right now the score is one to nothing. And if Seamus puts this one through the hoop, we'll have ourselves a tie situation. Am I doing the math right? Uh, that is correct. I believe so. That's part of my job is to keep <laughs> the stakes ratcheted up very, very high. So Seamus. Think about it. Give me your best answer for a construction machine. Which of the following is the best method to monitor performance? Well, with all that pressure on me now, I'm probably gonna have to go with A. You don't. You don't want to phone a friend. You don't um, want to. You, you don't want to. You're that. You're that confident. Yes. I love it. I. I really admire that. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure I applaud it, but I admire it. <laughs> is what? It, what's the correct answer? Is it A? It's A. He's done it. You tied the game, man. For God's sakes, people, if you're going to clap for anything, clap for that. He tied the game. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, telematics, again, technology, but from a, from a daily useful thing. Put it in perspective, Jason. Off-board telematics, again, you can monitor everything about the job site and about the machines. You can benchmark operator performance. You can benchmark machine performance. You can benchmark one job versus another job, one fleet of machines versus another. hours, location, fuel, payload, fuel efficiency, productivity. It's all in telematics. Good Lord, man, that's a lot. Did he miss anything at all, Lonnie? I'd just like to wrap it up by it's the ultimate in digital insights into what's going on with your job site and your machine. The ultimate in digital insights with what's going on with your job and your machine. Lonnie, you really have embraced the whole brevity thing we talked about before. I like it. All right, we have uh, five minutes left, and that's good news because we're in a tie situation. So what we do in a tie situation is these guys are each going to hand you a card and a magic marker. I'm then going to ask you each a question. You're going to write your answer to the question on the back of the card. And then when I ask you to show the cameras your answer, you'll do that. We clear? Fine, yes, sir. Excellent. Here it is. Stand by. All righty. Operating costs include many factors, including fuel expense. Fuel expenses can account for as much as what percent of operating cost? We're looking for a percentage. Write it down when you're ready. There is no friend to phone. There is no dramatic music. <laughs> but if there were, it would go are we done? Yes, We're sir. done? All good. Yes, sir. All right, here we go then. I'm going to start with you. When I say you, it's only because I forgot your name. Forgive me. I'm under a lot of pressure. It's uh, Steve. Alex. Damn it. Close, close. Alex. Operating costs include many factors, including fuel expense. Fuel expenses can account. For as much as what percent of operating costs? The answer is? I said 50. He says 50%. And Seamus, you said? I said 55. 55%. Well, who's ever closer is going to win. Let's go ahead and see what the true percentage is. It's up to 50%. Oh, so close. <laughs> so close. But uh, Alex is our winner. You're going to get a $300 gift card for ShopCat.com. But because you spell your name funny, Seamus, you're going to get a card as well with slightly less money on it. But that's just the way life works. I appreciate it. Yeah. We're all winners, but just slightly different amounts. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough. Good. Uh, say something smart to conclude uh, regarding fuel costs, Lonnie. 
Yeah, fuel cost is kind of that necessary evil. If we're not feeding the tank, obviously the machine's not going to run. So we're always trying to look at fuel efficiency and drive it down. And unfortunately, it can account for up to 50% of that overall operating cost, depending on that machine and the application it's in. Jason, the market's a mess. Obviously, we know what's going on in the world. The the fuel conversation is is a part of that right now. From an operator's perspective, from a from an owner's perspective, uh, it's it's kind of a mixed mixed thing, I guess. But this is got to save people an awful lot of money as fuel costs come down. It is. It's a constant bill. You know, it comes every day or every week or every month, depending on how they bill you. And you got to be able to control that. If you can control that big swing and that big percentage, you can really drive down your operating costs. And again, that's why you want to use telematics to monitor your machines, look at the fuel consumption, look at your production to get your fuel efficiency. Because if you drive that number down, that's all going into your back pocket in terms of money. Not the side pocket, not the front pocket. Nope, back pocket. Left Are, back, actually. <laughs> so weird. This has been a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I, I remembered Alex's name, finally. Seamus's, I still can't spell it, but they're leaving with fabulous prizes. Guys, thank you so much for the work you do, for being a part of Caterpillar. Guys, thanks for sitting up here with me. We'll do it again later this afternoon, 2 o'clock, I think, something like that, for another riveting episode of Titan of the trades. Till then, adios.